You'll be shocked when you hear this. Dr. Phil said nothing but facts and the woke hosts of The View couldn't handle it. Whoopi Goldberg had to stop the show before Dr. Phil could expose her. Let's see what's in store for us. So last year, uh, you aired the final episode of The Dr. Phil Show after 21 seasons. 21. So, yeah. <laughs> so what have you missed the most about being on during daytime? Well, you know, it's not about a, what I'm missing. It's about what I'm excited about going forward. In daytime, you've got a certain demographic, as you guys know, because a lot of people are at work, and uh, you guys are such a part of America's uh, fabric that you get taped and people watch you when they get home, and I think they did uh, with us as well. Yeah. But I'm excited to address men and kids that have been in school. And also, it's fun to go on late at night. I mean, at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. You can say things that Brian doesn't let us say anymore. Yeah, I know. Exactly. I, I've already been getting uh, some warnings about that. <laughs> <laughs> you can only go so far. Whoa. He warned at the beginning that they couldn't go that far and discuss topics he wanted to discuss. That's interesting. Not every TV program can do that, and not everyone dares to talk about high-profile topics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is, Dr. Phil, you are talking about things you're excited for. In April, you're launching an entire news and entertainment cable TV network yeah. called Merritt Street Media. Now, you've built all new studios on a five-acre campus in Texas. That's going to include a Dr. Phil museum. So tell us about what you've been working on. Well, it, this is a whole new network, and it's five acres under roof, and we're going to have like four hours of news every day. Hmm. And I have a real novel aspect about this news part of it. We're going to tell people the facts and let them make up their own mind about whether it's good news or bad news. Yeah. It's not going to be spin, spin, spin. We're just going to, here's what happened. You decide whether it's good news or bad news. And my show is kind of the anchor in prime time. And I'm going to deal with the things I've always dealt with, real people talking about real challenges, looking for real solutions. But those have changed to include social issues, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Think about when I started, 22, it was in 02, the first text message had never been sent. Wow. Wow. Think about that. Wow. There, the first text message had never, ever been sent. And, and now we have to deal with... I, I, like 0809, the smartphone came out. Everything changed. Phil McGraw built a really huge studio, and what he has planned is magnificent. We really don't need one topic on the air. We need programs like his. Why can't we just have one issue that really matters? That would be interesting. Everyone gets their news from you. You're um, just to jump in here. When your network starts. Um, you're hosting the primetime show called Dr. Phil Primetime. And for an upcoming episode, my understanding is that you went to the southern border. Now, you're saying that you're going to give people facts. What did you take away from that experience, and what kind of reporting are you going to be bringing back from that experience? I'll tell you a fact I took away. I talked to the head of all the border guards down there, the, the head of the union. I asked him straight up, kids are coming over the border with numbers written on them, phone numbers and addresses. Mm -hmm. Do we check those out? He said, well, we call them. Is it possible that we're sending them into known prostitution rings or sweatshops? He said, it's not possible. It is absolute. We are using American tax dollars to ship children into known prostitution All and sweatshops. Or some children? Well, who knows? Okay. It's really true. No one knows where these children and people are going, and no one can confirm it. This is the harsh truth on which Phil McGraw relies, and I sense that the presenters have huge doubts. Well, Dr. Phil, I want to make sure we get to your new book, which yes. is um, We've Got Issues. <clears throat> and a lot, you were referring to it in the last segment, how much has changed since you first got started in this. And one of the things is social media. Well, think about it. In, in like 08, 09, smartphones came on, and, and kids started, they stopped living their lives and started watching people live their lives. Mm. And so we saw the biggest spike and the highest levels of depression, anxiety, loneliness, and suicidality since records have ever been kept. Mm. And it's just continued on and on and on. And then mm -hmm. COVID hits 10 years later, and the same agencies that knew that are the agencies that shut down the schools for two years. Mm -hmm. Who does that? Who takes away the support system for these children? Who takes them away and shuts it down? And by the way, when they shut it down, 
they stopped the mandated reporters from being able to see children that were being abused and sexually molested, and in fact sent them home and abandoned them to their abusers with no way to watch, and referrals dropped 50 to 60 percent. So, there was also a yeah. pandemic yeah, going there was, on. They were trying to save kids' lives. They were trying to save kids' well. lives. Remember, we know a lot of folks who died during this. So the, it wasn't, people weren't laying uh, around eating children. bond, but well, you know what? We're lucky. Maybe we're lucky they didn't because we kept them out of the, the, the places that they could be, be sick because no one wanted to believe we had an issue. I used to His book really brought reality to light. He described and told the truth that many people are afraid to talk about. Why did Whoopi Goldberg react so strongly to it? And why did she dislike it so much? All because she is defending the government she follows. What do you think about it? Write your opinion in the comments and don't forget to watch other shocking news on the channel.